All right, hello everybody, Peter here. I just thought we could take a few minutes to sit back, relax, and draw some lines on the paper. I don't, uh, there's like a little, there's like a little thing here on the paper, like a little notch or a nugget or a, I don't know. I feel like if I pick at it, it'll get worse. We can ignore it. I just want to draw, that's all, all right? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, all right? So I'm going to sit here. I'm gonna chat with you, and we're gonna we're gonna doodle a little bit. And I'm using a 0.7 millimeter. This has pen type Posca pen, which is not like a pen that I've drawn much with in the past. But I picked one up at the store the other day. And I just kind of wanted to try with it. So this is technically a paint pen uh, instead of an ink pen. Like I had to do the whole thing where you shake it, you know, and like prime it, you know, by pushing this part in and, you know, it was like a little bit of a chore to get it started. But once it got started, uh, it's pretty satisfying to work with. Like the lines are really deep and dark. At least I think I like it. Anyways, how are y'all doing today? I don't know if I like it or not. It feels a little bit weird because the you know the tip of the pen can kind of go in like this, which I'm not used to. I'm used to not. I'm used to there being like no, no give, no take at all. I want to connect all these lines. Sometimes I, I kind of float around a bit. You know, like draw a line here, draw a line here draw a line here, and then I get a little, I just want to go back around and connect everything so it's all one kind of cohesive thing. So I'm going to do that now. I, you, can, you can do it different ways, like draw a bunch of different disconnected things and then either spend a long time before you go back and connect it all, or go back and connect everything um, much more frequently. And maybe have totally different ways to doodle. Or draw. Sometimes I feel like calling doing you know, calling this doodling is um you know sells it short. Just cause it just because I call it doodling doesn't mean it's not as good as any other kind of art. It's just fine. I'm, I'm keeping it pretty quick and loose here, not not overthinking any any one line in particular. I don't think. I'm not so far. I haven't really stopped to look at the whole drawing. I haven't stopped to sit back and look at it. I do that sometimes, maybe at some point in the future of the drawing. See where I want to go with it next. I'm going to rotate the paper a little bit. Look at it. So far, a lot of the lines are going this way. So if I rotate it this way, I can draw the natural motion of my hand, you know, will go this way. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I do, this pen, paint pen should be good at, you know, like blocking in some dark sections like this pretty effortlessly. Yeah, it's pretty satisfying. Nice. Yeah, the paint pen is definitely a different feeling. I wonder if it's good at drawing on... Oh, it is good at drawing on skin. Hello? The hardest part about drawing on skin is that the skin, you know, like, moves around while you're drawing, so... I still haven't gotten into any tattooing to speak of. It's just like a whole big different thing, you know? It's easier to st it's easier to talk about than actually do. Everyone, for years, everyone's been like, Peter, you should tattoo. You should do tattooing. And it's easier to say that to someone. It's harder to actually do it. Plus, I don't take it lightly. 
I feel like there's a lot of things that can go wrong with doing a tattoo on someone, you know? But that's a conversation for another time. I think it is anyways. Draw some curly bits around here. Mm hmm. I've kind of, there's kind of like a false border right here going across the top. Oops. That's fine. That's fine. It's all right. Bring this up around here. I feel like this kind of stuff might be very easily prone to smudging if I'm not careful about where I put my hand down, you know? So I'm not going to, since I'm replaying this in real time, I'm, I'm going to allow myself the luxury of rotating the paper a little more. Usually I try not to rotate the paper at all because once I speed up the video, I feel like it could uh, become, you know, you know, almost make the viewers uh, nauseous or something just from all the, the, the fast rotating. But in this situation, it's probably okay. Swirl this up and around. Clean up these lines right here. It's like a little sloppy right here, but just darken it up. There we go. Looking a little better. Yeah. Yeah, so I just woke up a little while ago. Let me give you a little update on my day. I woke up a little while ago. I then I stayed I stayed in bed for a little bit longer than I meant to. That's okay. Uh, but it, the point is, I did get up and I started my day. Went outside, drank some coffee, ate a granola bar on the on the balcony uh, while I read a book. I've been I started reading the the Foundation, uh, the the book the Foundation series, I guess, by Isaac Asimov. It's a great book. I just finished I just finished um. What's the other book that I just finished? Oh, it's right here. Um, East of Eden by John Steinbeck. That was a good book. I really liked that. I recommend it to anyone. I've been enjoying doing some reading in the mornings. I kind of go through phases in my life where I do more or less reading, depending on how my kind of personal routines and schedules uh, work out. So I'm happy right now that I'm, I've kind of made a routine or a schedule for myself that incorporates some reading. And then after I finished reading and drinking my cold brew coffee out there, I started making my own cold brew coffee now. Um, for my birthday, a friend, a friend, some friends of mine gave me a, a cold brew coffee maker, which I had been kind of on the fence about buying one of these for, for a while. Maybe they knew that, or maybe I hadn't mentioned it or something. So they got me a cold brew coffee maker. So I've been making my own cold brew coffee now. The cold brew coffee maker is the same brand as my French press, which I appreciate. You know, because then there's like some, some uniformity in my coffee appliances that way, which uh, satisfies me. Uh, so I've been making my own cold brew coffee. It's, it tastes slightly different than the store-bought coffee that I've been making, but it still tastes good and uh, still very much coffee. And it gets the job done, if you know what I mean. Oh, also lately I've been doing this weird thing where I sleep on one side of my face, which seems to irritate the eye on that side of my face because I like have that eye plastered against my pillow. Also, I have the drawings like upside down now. 
compared to how I started out. That's okay. Yeah, I have like one eye plastered against a pillow, and apparently, I, I guess I don't have that eye closed all the way, and so I wake up in the morning with my left eye hurting because it it's like dehydrated or wasn't, you know, I guess it was like open a little bit all night. And so even now my eye is hurting. Not sure what to do about that except to try to remember to sleep on my back. Any eyeologists out there? What's the difference between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist? Are those both eye doctors? Maybe one has to do with cor correcting vision and one has to do with diseases of the eye or something like that. Someone knows. I was about to say who knows, but I'm sure someone knows. Wikipedia probably knows. We could be probably eye, ear, nose, and throats. EMT. So we have this. I kind of like it when there's like in kind of like implied like little borders like that going along. We've got like a line right there. Maybe we can have like something going on like you know, like right here. I don't know. It's all fine and dandy. Like I said, it's just very low pressure. Not everything you do needs to be the craziest, you know, most, you know, like, I mean, I do have that kind of pressure in the back of my mind all the time. Like maybe today, maybe today I'll do something that will, do, you know, kind of like redefine my life. Maybe I'll, today I'll do the thing that will, uh, you know, go down in history and, you know, make me like a famous artist or something. But sometimes, you know, that's like, that's too much pressure. It's just, it's just good to sit down and enjoy creating something. I think that's a good way to grow as an artist too. Just to, because I don't think, because I think, I th in my opinion, I mean, there's probably other good ways to grow as an artist, you know, like challenging yourself and stuff like that, um, which I, of course is good, but also a good way to grow as an artist is just to draw a lot, and if, or whatever your medium of, chosen medium of art is, and uh, you're not going to do it a lot if you don't enjoy it, so you have to create some sort of framework, you know, some something some way in your mind to to create that that is conducive to doing it a lot and for me it's just for some reason it's low expectations a lot of the time not all the time a lot of the time i do create stuff and i have high expectations for myself but it, i feel like a lot of the time it's just my it depends on my mood i can easily um you know talk myself out of it if uh, there's high expectations if i have high expectations i'll sit down and i'll be like you know, those are the times when I'd, I'll draw five lines and then ball it up right away because my expectations are too high and those first five lines of the drawing will never be good enough if my expectations are too high and if I want to always create something incredible, right? So, I don't know. Of course I want to create something incredible. I don't have all the answers, but it's better to create than to always discourage ourselves with how good we're not doing. Of course we have. I feel like I'm talking in circles now. It's okay. Hopefully you understand a little bit of what I'm trying to say. Hopefully it helps a little bit. I don't know. What are you guys up to today? Drawing some little details in here. I think this one I have to prime a little bit. Every now and then I have to like push the tip of the pen in, you know? It's a paint pen, really. I 
I think I really do need to, one thing, I really do need to keep concentrating, you know, on making these, uh, like, darker sections. Darker chunks of the drawing, which, uh, make the other chunks pop out more. That's just, that's something I've been working on for years, actually. It's like a mind over matter sort of thing, because I want to just pack it all in with details. I mean, I've been talking about that for years. How I've been trying to train myself to do that. It doesn't come immediately for some reason, even though it's at the forefront of my mind when I'm drawing, I still don't. It's not easy. It's not easy to just do it, you know. I'm working against the way I've like subconsciously trained myself to draw a different way, just by habit or whatever. Sometimes I wish my drawing style was different. Like I sit around drawing and I'm just like, oh, all my drawings are turning out the same way. Why don't I have a different style already, you know? Um, and I think my style is constantly changing, but it's a gradual thing. So I just have to keep on drawing and just kind of patiently wait for it to change. Sometimes I wish I could just fast, fast forward, you know, like five or 10 years and see what it'll be like then. Because it has definitely changed over the past 10 years, you know? I used to draw so many more mandalas and stuff. Nowadays, I couldn't imagine drawing a mandala. It seems so boring to me. But back then, oh, I loved it. Maybe it just had something to do with what I was going through. It helped me, I don't know, in some way, just like sit there and like meditate or something. I'm not sure. I really liked it, though, back then. I've been drawing stuff like this for probably even longer than 10 years though. This kind of, this kind of weird swirly interact, like a bunch of little lines, you know, like interlocking with each other and stuff like that. I've probably been doing this for even longer. I'm sure there's other little elements I've worked in over the years, though. Something has to have changed. I'm just, sometimes I feel like I'm too close to the situation to accurately tell what's going on. There we go. I'm liking how it's turning out. Some little, see when like some of these, for, like in a lot of these sections, like here, I'm drawing black lines, but I'm really drawing them so close together that in a way I'm really drawing the white lines, you know, the, the negative space, the paper in the background. Those are the lines I'm really drawing. And as they interact with these other lines here, I draw this, these shadows here. And uh, so it makes it look like they're maybe kind of going in behind. Maybe that adds a little bit of depth, I guess. Guess I could drop that one back behind also, and here also. Yeah. We'll come back to this part at the top here in a little bit. Um, let's see here. Swoop that around. I'm trying to figure out if the tip of this pen is changing. 
like if it's getting squished at all as I draw. It looks slightly different, but I can't tell if there's just like bits of paper on there or if this is how it always was. I think it's okay. I mean, it's still drawing fine, so. I need to figure out what's going on right here. I'm gonna kind of tie it all together in some way that satisfies me. Like this, maybe. Bring these lines up around. Maybe this goes up here. This goes back in here. Just darken that in, darken this in. Oh yeah. It's kind of like when, one of my biggest inspirations is just like, uh, like smoke plumes, you know? I remember when I was little, I used to just, my parents would get so upset, I would just have, take like a whole, a whole like, packet of matches, a whole box of matches. I would just take them and light a match and then instantly blow it out like poof. Just like a little puff of air, blow it out and then just watch this, watch the smoke plume up from the end of the match. Watch it. I just loved, loved the way the smoke would billow, right? All those satisfying curves just naturally working their way together. I feel like that's a, always been a huge inspiration for me. Just curves like that. I'm a little unsure about, but that's par for the course. It'll all pull together, don't you worry. And if there's like a little part of it that looks a little bit off to you, don't worry. It, it won't stand out to everyone else like it does to you because it mostly stands out to you because you were there as it was drawn line by line. Everyone else sees the whole drawing all at once, every line all at the same time, right? Yeah, it's gonna be fine. There we go. Yeah, it's like it splits off a little bit or something. Some little cr curves and swirls up here. nodules and balls and stuff. Shake the paint pen. Yeah. Oh. Kind of messed that up. I feel like the tip of it is messing up a little bit. Or I might have just fixed it. And I think it's fine now. Hmm. I don't really know if I'm using this pen for its intended purpose is the problem. Like there's so many other pens you can use to just draw on paper. Maybe I'm supposed to be using this to draw on other weird surfaces, you know? Like other services that normal pens couldn't draw on, like 
plastic or wood or metal or something. Some more swirls ballooning out here. When you do this kind of thing, you can pretty much take as much time with it as you want. If you want to take less time with it, you can just go quicker. It's okay if it looks a little sloppier. It's really your own choice. Or if you want to take less time with it, you can always do things like use a smaller piece of paper and it'll seem like less of a time commitment or use a larger pen, you know, or just don't feel like you have to fill up the whole piece of paper, right? You can just draw a little thing in the middle or down in one corner of it or draw something down in one corner of it and the next day, you know, draw something up here and just keep adding to it day to day. Or if you want to spend longer on it, you know, if you want to really commit to it and draw something epic, you know, use a small pen, big piece of paper, but just don't, you know, be wary of it starting to feel like a chore. You don't want that. If you get tired of it, stop. If you start feeling bored, it's okay to take a break and come back to it. Or never come back to it, okay? That's not like a failure thing. Not at all. That's one of the things I like about art, is it's just so wonderfully optional. Here we go. Some more darkness. I forgot I could, sometimes I really do forget I can rotate the paper and it really helps with some lines just as far as the, like the physiological way your hand works and how it draws, you know. There we go. I'm going to stop and look at the whole thing for a second here to kind of see what other direction I want to go with it in. So I, is there some other stuff I want to do at the top here, maybe. Maybe I kind of want to have like some stuff swirling off on this in this direction. I kind of like this side of it. I don't know if there's too much more I want to do over here. Yeah, I kind of like this area. Um, like the, I like that, yeah. Maybe a little bit of shading right there in the form of little hatch marks. Maybe a little bit more like that. Um, or end here. To give a little bit of depth. Oh yeah, I could I could do that a bunch more actually. All through here. And in here. Oh, just got rid of a whole line right there, that's alright. I was afraid I was smudging something just now, but I wasn't. If you do smudge, it's all right. Don't freak out. That's all. That's all the advice I have. Not the end of the world. I smudge all the time. And 
no one really notices that much. At least if they do, they don't say anything, so. Am I doing too much of these little dots everywhere? I don't know. It's easy to get carried away. It's a rhetorical question. I don't actually care what you think. It's a very personal thing, these dots. These little lines, the shading. All right, so over here, I want to kind of do this, and then this, this, and Very weird, uh, not really what I imagined, but it's all right. I shouldn't have even told you that, you know, maybe what if that's exactly what I imagined? What if that's exactly what I meant to do? You would have never known. Maybe you would have thought less of me, but that's okay. I wanted like some weird little gnarly fern fingers or something going out there. Can add some like a little bit of shading to them to give them a little bit more body. A bit more like this. Mm hmm. Now you're getting the hang of it. Oh, look, see, look, smudging. You see it? Probably because I was drawing a bunch on my fingertip and I could put the fingertip here. Oh yeah, just did it again. It's fine. Let's see. I don't know if that, I feel like that part didn't even make sense. This is like optical illusion. This part was part of this part, and then these, this part, maybe I have to, this part went with this. There we go, that's maybe a little bit better. I'm not really sure though. It's fine. These are like little weird little cabbage stalks or something. to darken this section up right here. But it gives like a little, if you draw these lines like this, it gives it like a little bit of flow direction. Like it helps, helps you like getting the feel for the, the swirl, you know? Yeah. A little nugget of something tucked away in there. In the darkness. Kind of want to. 
tuck even more away back in here to get act like there's like stuff you know like it's like a whole big clump of stuff back here A whole head of lettuce, yeah. yeah. That's better. Yeah. Not, not bad at all. That was risky. I feel like I put my hand right down on that little part that I just drew. Fresh ink. I'm turning the paper now so that I can draw over here and I won't have to put my hand right down on top of all this stuff I just drew. Okay. Sometimes it's difficult when I'm like drawing stuff that I want to flow in a certain direction and when I'm also doing like shading. In my mind, the, sh the shading, I'm doing it with the idea that maybe the sun or the light source is maybe, the light source is maybe up here somewhere. So I'm making, you know, like I'm making stuff that's tucked up under there a little bit darker, you know, or stuff, you know, like on this side of stuff, darker. And it, it does get a little confusing in my mind sometimes when I rotate it and I'm like, trying to figure it all out again in my head. It, it's a little weird for me sometimes, but I can usually figure it out. It's not the worst thing. There, there are worse things, no doubt. No doubt in my mind. Hmm. I'll come back to that part later in a little bit. For now, I want to kind of address this part of the drawing up here. which is definitely an interesting part of the drawing. Just for the fact that there's like a long straight line right there. Kind of a weird way to do that, but I like it. Like a little bit different. Like some like a weird hand, like going up, like that. Now I have to Yeah, I guess that's okay. Yeah, just darken it all in, fill in the gaps. I 
I, I leave a lot of gaps so I can come back and add things later. So I leave like options for myself. I you know I want to make things you know like overlap or whatever. I don't know. I don't know really what's going on here with this little s section hanging down here. Oh, I don't know. It didn't really work out the way I envisioned it. But once again, it's all okay. Just kind of make it all sink into the background there. These kind of things I make like this pretty often remind me of like those remind me of sea anemones and the little nodules and fingers like that. Anyone else? I have some little circles floating right here. Little accent circles, maybe continuing down here. Ooh, maybe a line right here. Yeah. Dark. Dark. Yeah, it's worth a try. Some dots here. Some dots here and here maybe. Some dots here and here. Darken this up, and this, this, oh, oh, I smudged my dots. These dots just got smudged, but they got smudged in an okay way that really just turned the dots into lines. Everything's okay. Is that an okay coping? I, I use this in... Not just when I'm drawing, but just in life in general. I just constantly repeat that to myself. Everything, I either say everything is okay or everything's going to be okay. I just constantly say that to myself over and over again. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's okay. It's fine. power of repetition. Sometimes I'm lying to myself, but sometimes I don't think I am. Sometimes I'm lying to myself by thinking that everything's not okay. So I just gotta repeat that everything is okay. Right? Well, let me zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Oops. Oh my goodness. There's a fly buzzing around my head. I put up a fly trap and everything. Oh, I never showed you the scent of my candle. Oh no, there's hot wax. How do you say this, by the way? <gasps> Did I spill it? Almost. I just almost spilled it. Bergamo? Is that how you say it? Bergamot? Bergamo? I think it's bergamo and sandalwood. Everyone take... Oh! <gasps> I drowned the wicks. Oh well. Have some smoke swirls. Anyways, it smells a little better in here. Nice. Let's shade the noodles a little bit. Something up here, I, I want to put like a little, um, I want to put like a crown on top, to be honest. That's what I want to do. Yeah.
don't know if it's it's a little lopsided maybe, but that's okay. I think it might look good, you know, because um, something that's like a little bit, um, it's all very squishy and uh, swirly. Put something slightly more angular on top. Maybe it looks good. A little bit of shading on the inside there. Just kind of going with my gut. Maybe it's not a good gut. going with it anyways. Huh. Not really how I imagined it either, but... Hmm. It was supposed to be like a jewel and then it was supposed to be like shaded or something, you know? There's a lot of, like, supposed to be's <laughs> when it comes to my doodles. <laughs> uh, should I shade it more right here is what I'm trying to figure out. And should I do the lines, like, this way or this way? But I feel like I, the lines this way would be satisfying to me because they would go, you know, parallel to this side of the crown. But if they're this way, they'd be parallel to the lines that are already there. Maybe I should have gradually made them t change directions. So I'm just going to keep on going this way. I feel like they should be a little darker on this side too because of these little, you know, tentacles that are going over. Hmm. Could definitely be better. Could definitely be worse. That's also a recurring theme that I find. That's one of the things that keeps me going, keeps me wanting to make another doodle, you know, is the fact that I like how the last one turned out, but I also think it could have been a lot better. Maybe the next one will have some satisfying, you know, redemption in the, the way it turned out. Fix some of my mistakes from the previous drawing, you know. There we go. I mean, I like it. It's like a weird little clump of lines with a crown nestled there on top. That's pretty simple. Nothing too crazy. Thanks for joining me today. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you like this kind of video, like not sped up live commentary. Um, I think, I think there's a playlist of some of these. It's called Drawing with Peter Draws, these not sped up drawing videos. So be sure to check that out. I'll put the link to it in the description and, uh, subscribe to, if you want to check out some more videos like this, I've got some more coming up. So, all right. See y'all later. All right. Goodbye.